Bryce Harper dropped out of high school. He was a first overall pick. He was called overrated. He has won the MVP. He was again called overrated. He's been hit multiple times by fastballs, caused fights, suffered ejections, and in 2022, he was called a legend. He has seen everything for one lifetime. He has also overcome everything too. But one thing that has gone on to be his Achilles heel for the pitcher, one never ending nightmare that has got him by the throat is what we're about to check out now. When the 2022 regular season came to a close, Harper was a hero in Philly. If you look closely, you probably see a cape resting on his shoulders, dancing like a flag in the wind. But it wasn't like this at the beginning of the year. In fact, it was a terrible start of the season for Harper, and this is saying the least. Because on May 12, 2022, he'd been diagnosed with a small tear in the ulnar ligament of his right elbow. This grounded him for about six weeks, even after a platelet-rich plasma injection. But Philly didn't entirely sideline him, they just relegated him to designated hitter. And then he faced another setback. On June 25th, Blake Snell struck him with a 97 mile per hour fastball in a game against the San Diego Padres. The pain was felt by everyone, especially the Phillies, who announced that Harper would be out indefinitely. After they put a splint in Harper's hand, he told ESPN that, I've never had a hand injury like this, never broken anything in my life. This is new to me, so I'm just going to go day by day, see kind of where we're at and see the specialist in Philly. And if I do need to see another specialist somewhere, then I will. He later underwent surgery, which saw three pins stuck to his thumb. Just imagine that for a second. Have you ever had to go through something like that? But recovery wasn't so far from Harper as he was cleared to play in August, but not in the big leagues. He went back to the roots of professional baseball, to the minor leagues, to play for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs, which is a AAA affiliate of the Phillies. He showed promise with his recovery as he homered twice in a game for the Iron Pigs on August 23rd. Then the Phillies advanced to the playoffs for the first time since 2011, the end of the regular season, Harper, who had been restricted to the position of designated hitter for more than 90% of the season, could still make some impressive records. He was ninth in the intentional walks at 63 runs, 18 home runs, and 65 RBIs. But this is when everything changed. This is when the story of the injury-prone Harper changed into one of the greatest hitters to ever play the game. A legend, even before he retired. Harper had gone into the 2022 postseason as his first since 2017, and against the St. Louis Cardinals in the National League Wild Card Series, he hit a home run in Game 2, which led to a 2-0 victory. This victory also led to Harper's first postseason series win in his career. With that momentum, he shined in the National League Division Series, batting 8 for 16. This was enough to defeat the defending champions Atlanta Braves 3-1 and push the Phillies to their first National League Championship Series since 2010. When October came, Harper made a legendary play on its 23rd day. Phillies were down 3-2 in the series against San Diego Padres. It's Game 5, when Bryce Harper hit a go-ahead two-run home run in the eighth inning off Robert Suarez's pitch. This was the game-winning hit. It made sure that Harper won the NLCS MVP award for the year 2022. Harper was on a roll and the world had already forgotten that he had had to battle injury during a significant part of the year. Everyone was simply impressed and eagerly awaiting the magic he would pull in the World Series against the Houston Astros. And he did put up a show, going 4 for 20 at bats and having a run in both games 1 and 3. Fortunately, the Phillies lost the series title in six games, but as if that was not enough blow already for Harper and his team, his most feared nightmare happened yet again. Another injury. On November 23rd, it was reported that he had undergone Tommy John surgery, which is also known as the Ulnar Collateral Ligament Reconstruction, or UCL. It's a surgery done to repair a torn ligament inside the elbow, and recovery can take up to eight months. Shohei Otani had undergone the same thing in October 2018 and can only be cleared to play in May 2019. As for Bryce, he'd be facing the same recovery period and reports say he might return by the 2023 All-Star break, and only as a designated hitter. A Twitter post by the Philadelphia Phillies read, the prognosis for Bryce to be returning as the designated hitter by the All-Star break at 2023 with a possible return to play right field towards the end of the regular season. This was one huge blow for not just Harper and the Phillies, but also fans of his and that of the Phillies. But the truth is, we've almost gotten used to seeing Harper get injured every season. 
sometimes more than once or even thrice. His injury nightmare dates back to as far as his minor league years. His first injury as a professional was a hamstring injury on August 18, 2011, while he was running from second to third base. His coaches had to carry him off the field and into the seven-day disabled list to end his season for that year. Ironically, he got promoted into Major League Baseball for the Nationals because Ryan Zimmerman had been injured and placed on the disabled list. Harper quickly proved himself, showing to the world why Sports Illustrated called him the Chosen One and compared him to LeBron James in 2009. That year, he became the first player ever who was under 20 years of age to record 254 total bases and 57 extra bases. He also had 22 home runs, 98 runs scored, 340 on-base percentage, and the Rookie of the Year award. He'd also not get injured that year unless you count the self-sustained injury, the one he got when he angrily threw his bat against a clubhouse wall out of frustration. The wall had retaliated, bouncing the bat back to his head and cracking it open slightly. But in 2013, he had to undergo a surgery to get rid of a bursa sac which lodged in his left knee. This was like a preparation for his ulnar collateral ligament injuries that was continued to haunt him since. Because in the 2014 season, he had his first ulnar plight as his left thumb suffered a torn ulnar collateral ligament against the Padres in August. In 2015, when Harper was never injured, he won the National League MVP award for the first time in his career. He also became the youngest player ever to have at least 40 home runs in 120 walks in one season, beating Babe Ruth. This cemented the fact that Harper should be feared when he's healthy. Nevertheless, we've also seen what he did in 2022, even with all the injuries. So take this down on your iPad, computer, or anything. Harper should be feared, injured or not. You remember in 2021 when he won his second National League MVP? Well, he'd been injured seven times that season. One time he experienced tightness in his back. Another time he was forced to leave a game against the Mets in June 2021 after being hit by Jacob deGrom's pitch. He also sustained injuries in his face, forearm, shoulder, wrist, and his lower back. This didn't stop him from making 35 home runs, 84 RBIs, leading the league in slugging percentage, winning the National League Hank Aaron Award, making the All-MLB first team, and becoming the second player in MLB history to win a league MVP with two separate teams after clocking 30 years of age. The other person that achieved this was Barry Bonds. So just take a few seconds and imagine all Harper would have achieved if he wasn't so plagued by injuries. Like any passionate athlete out there, Bryce is never happy to miss a game because of injury. When he injured his thumb in 2022, he had said this, I hate being injured. Things happen for a reason. Everybody says that. This reason sucks right now, but I've got to be positive for the guys in here. I know they'll pick up the slack. I'm just really bummed for the organization, for the guys, the city of Philadelphia, the fans. I love running out there and playing every game. Definitely bummed. Kind of wish it would have hit me in the face. I don't break bones in my face, so I can take 98 to the face, but I can't take 97 to the thumb. But why does Bryce have to always be injured? It's not like he hasn't been doing his part to stay healthy and fit. Even Ron and Sherry, Bryce's parents, are fitness junkies. There's a culture of fitness and sports for the Harper family. His father, Ron, worked as an iron worker in Sin City and has always caused to stir online for looking so ripped and fit. Some have even named him one of the sexiest dads in baseball. Harper is also a hard worker like him who works out pretty well too. Doing stuff like a 45 minute full body workout, squats, bench press, deadlifts, yoga, Pilates, and running. But what seems to be the problem? Why is Harper's health still slipping from his fingers? Can't be about good food. Bryce has a net worth of $70 million and can buy whatever he wants. Besides, what he does lack about food when his elder brother Brian is a chef in Las Vegas. But like many doctors and medical experts in sport have said in the past, players who get injured more often than not usually have muscle imbalances, core stability deficits, and poor neuromuscular control. So one or more of this may just be the cause of Harper's frequent nightmares. Nevertheless, we wish him speedy recovery and can't wait to see him playing again. If you enjoyed this video about Bryce Harper, check out the video on the screen now or the one we posted below because we're sure you'll like that one too. See you there.